are listening to Worth Electronics What's Up Radio Podcast, where each week we are seeing what's up in the world of electronics and PCB design. We'll be checking in with leading industry experts and Worth Electronic technical specialists who are going to shine a light on our topics, such as energy harvesting, wireless power transfer, EMI issues, sensor technology, and so much more. Tune in to get technical design tips and applications during your commute, at your desk, or wherever you might be with Worth Electronics What's Up Podcast. Today, we're taking a look at trends in temperature measurement. We're also going to look at the different technology approaches of temperature sensors. We want to focus on silicone-based temperature sensors with a digital interface. So by doing doing this, we'll show essential features of the temperature sensor. And we're specifically going to look at the WSEN-TIDS from Worth Electronic. Finally, we'll discuss advantages of these sensor types, especially in Industry 4.0 and IIoT applications, and we'll wrap it up with a discussion on optimization options for the broad design to meet different application requirements. So let's go uh, briefly to the uh, agenda for today's webinar. Uh, first, I will explain about the types of the temperature sensors and the sensors which are needed today in the industry 4.0 and the need of digitalization. Then we we'll look at the VAS and TIDS, the digital temperature sensors from the Virth Electronic and some of the applications of these uh, sensors and some of the design recommendations from our side so that you can have a perfect application and get the most out of your, the temperature sensors. So the temperature sensors, they, they are nowadays coming in so many different types some of which you already know the basic the basic and which are the most widely used in the wide temperature ranges are the thermocouples they are used from minus 250 degrees to more than 1000 degrees the thermocouples are nothing but uh, two different type of metal they are tied together and because of the cpec effect they conduct electric uh, they conduct that um, the, the thermal conductivity is different and so that they produce some uh, voltage out, millivolt outputs that can be directly linked to the temperature. Basically, the thermocouple uses a reference temperature as a cold junction and the hot, hot junction is the temperature where you measure with respect to the temperature of the cold junction. On the other hand, these kind of sensors are highly nonlinear. Also, they are not stable and the accuracy is not so good. But the fact is that they can be used from a wide range of temperature. The next ones are the RTD. These are widely known as the PT100, PT1000 ones. They, you must be knowing them from the uh, cylindrical types or nowadays they are also available in SMD types. They are very high accurate and they are also linear. But on the other hand, they are highly expensive. So very high accuracy also comes at the cost of uh, price. Next is the NTC PTC thermistors. Uh, these are nothing but only the, the passive components on your PCBs. The current is passed through the resistors and uh, the, the, the current is being monitored based on the temperature and that changes with the temperature increases or decreases. So NTC has a negative uh, temperature coefficient and PTC has the positive temperature coefficient. These uh, kind of uh, thermistors have a self-heating problem so that you have to recalibrate it when the temperature is being changed. Also in the dynamic uh, temperature where you, your temperature is changing very fast, these kind of uh, temperature sensors are not recommended. Also, these are, these are very extremely non-linear, so you have to, again, scale based on your application. Next is the silicon based uh, semiconductor silicon semiconductor based sensors which are the topic for today's webinar and they also have the similar measurement range of the thermistors a little bit uh, smaller from minus 55 to 140 degrees approximately uh, they basically work on the intrinsic property of the silicon band cap so the forward voltage of a diode is directly linked to the temperature and this is where uh, uh, the simple property of the semiconductor can be realized as a temperature sensor. 
here is the comparison of all of the temperature sensors what I discussed in the previous slide. You can see that, for example, the thermocouple, their accuracy is limited because they require cold junction compensation, which is the uh, knowing the temperature of your cold junction. So your reference temperature limits your, basically limits your accuracy at the end. On the other hand, the RTDs have the highest of the accuracy. Also, the semiconductor-based uh, sensor also have a, can be now reached uh, to up to a very high accuracy. The linearity, as you can see, the thermistor and thermocouple are very nonlinear. On the other hand, the semiconductor-based sensors are very much linear. A very important point is that what peripheral or circuits or calibration do you require when you use these kind of sensors? Uh, for thermocouples, as you see that you, uh, as we discussed that you need the cold junction compensation, you also need the amplification of the millivolt output, and then you have to scale. Sometimes you also need, when you need the digital output, then you also need an ADC converter. Same way for the RTD, you have to uh, do scaling, thermistor, the same thing that you have to do scaling, and you need a calibration for more than one points, which can be time consuming as well. On the other hand, semiconductor-based sensors are usually fully calibrated so that you don't have to calibrate it once you place it on your PCB or once you design it. The footprint-wise, the semiconductor-based sensors are the smallest. Uh, they can be also comparable in the size of thermistors. And nowadays, some of the RTDs also come in the same footprints. Before we move forward, uh, let me explain something about the industry 4.0 or the industrial IoT, what has been developing these days. Basically, the all of the ind industrial equipments are getting more and more interconnected. More and more process automatization has been happening and the machinery needs to work on their own. They send data wirelessly to a sensor node. You need remote access. You also need to, you also need to uh, monitor and control your machine or your data remotely and also do predictive maintenance if your machine needs uh, some correction or it is going to uh, malfunction or not that you can read from the sensor data. So wireless connectivity and digitalization is at the basis of the industry 4.0. On the other hand, temperature is also one of the most measured environmental quantity. So many physical chemical properties depend on the temperature and temperature, that's why temperature needs to be measured more often. Some of the examples where industry 4.0 is linked to temperature sensors, for example, crop monitoring or livestock monitoring where in the fields, some crop needs some water or some um, animals are not feeling well or they are not in the full shape or they need some medical attention. Smart clothes, for example, firefighters nowadays have temperature sensor integrated in their jacket. They monitor the ambient temperature and also the body temperature. Cold chain monitoring in the food industry and home appliances, of course, they are getting more and more wireless these days and they are getting um, interconnected more and more. So what, what in order to realize this kind of system, what do you need at the end? You need a sensor which is digital, that you can send your data wirelessly to a sensor node or your base station easily. It should be flexible. It can be used from, it can be, it can be changed in the functionality from the software. For example, you can change the data rate, you can have some interrupts. Of course, it should be battery driven for the remote uh, or mobile applications, and it should consume very less power. And also, nowadays, the devices are becoming more and more uh, smaller, so the sensor should also be compact. Here is an example of a cold chain monitoring in the food industry from where the product is manufactured in certain environments, and it is also transported and then stored in certain conditions so that it doesn't go bad or some microorganisms doesn't get to start evolving in the food. And these things must also be taken care of from the production to the plate. And the production to the plate is not a small journey. It takes sometimes takes lots of lots and lots of days and goes through different kind different means of transport. 
what do you need for these kind of uh, food industry and with this kind of logistic supply chain you need real time monitoring you monitor your food if it's at the correct te correct temperature throughout the journey you need to have some data logging also so that for liability issues for example if and when you know that the food might have gone wrong so that you cannot process it any further or you cannot sell, sell it to a consumer it should be battery operated most of the time the supply chain the food is traveling in trucks or in airplanes and it also have a fast it should also have a fast response time so that it can react very quickly to the temperature changes and alert a user that please be a pay, pay attention the temperature is not correct for example here is an example of how a complete system for a cold chain monitoring could look like so here you have a temperature sensor which, which continuously monitors the food and send food temperature and then it sends the data to the microcontroller which is also has a, a gnss module which can also track your location and the everything everything data is ev all of the data is transported to a base station or a sensor node through a rf module which you can use either wi-fi bluetooth or any other proprietary solutions so at the end it's this requires also more sensors than temperature sensors but here we are just talking about the temperature sensor so at the end you need a sensor that measures the temperature digitally in order to send the data directly to the server or log directly in the digital form without any further processing coming back to the temperature sensors which are silicon based how do they work so as mentioned that forward voltage of the silicon diode is temperature dependent so this this diode is basically the base emitter junction of uh, of an bi bipolar junction transistor here you can see the forward voltage is dependent of, of forward voltage of the uh, bjt is dependent on so many other temperatures but if we lay, if we, if we take two different transistors and supply them with different currents then we can have the difference of the forward voltages which is only dependent on the temperature and the equation becomes much more simpler so as you see the forward voltage is directly proportional to the temperature and has the very linear output so very simple phenomena leads to a realization of a complete temperature sensor this forward voltage is then amplified then digitalized and calibration is then performed in the next uh, steps that brings us to the digital temperature sensor from the virtual electronic the waste and tids what do we have in this sensor so as mentioned we have the same sensing element diode the forward voltage is then uh, amplified it has an on bolt am uh, ampli amplifier then it is uh, digitalized by edc converter and then signal processing is done on chip the digital temperature value is then stored in the inbuilt uh, temperature registers and there are also control registers where the calibration data is stored this there is also a dedicated control logic and digital comparator where the user can store his own temperature and the measured temperature is then compared with the user defined temperature in order to generate an interrupt the temperature registers are easily connected uh, can be easily uh, read from the i square c serial digital interface that two wire interface you can connect directly to your microcontroller so at the end the whole sensing element the analog front end and the digital front end is all uh, combined in one single ic the whole sensor is fully factory calibrated so no application specific calibration is required from the application side or from the user side on the other end you also don't need any peripheral circuits that you need usually for some of the analog uh, sensors for example you need a separate amplifier separate digital converter or some filters and here the, that requirement you don't that is not needed and that makes your uh, end application circuit designing uh, much simpler 
Let's have a look at some of the parameters. As mentioned, it has a I2C interface and two different I2C addresses are available so that you can connect two sensors on the same I2C bus. The measurement range is from minus 40 degrees to 125 degrees for the current IoT and industrial application. This measurement range is more than adequate. It has 16-bit digital output resolution. Uh, the typical accuracy is 0 0.25 degrees between minus 10 and 60 degrees and overall accuracy is uh, 0 0.7 degrees. As mentioned, this also has a very low current consumption and operates between 1.5 to 3.6 degrees, so that perfectly suitable for the battery operated devices. Uh, also, it's a six pin SMD device, easy can be easily mounted on the PCB and there is also a exposed pad at the bottom so that uh, the temperature sensing with the environment has better uh, connection. Here is a typical curve of the accuracy of the uh, temperature sensor, uh, which was measured in our labs uh, from minus 40 to 125 degrees, where you see the accuracy between minus 10 and 60 degrees is uh, uh, better uh, 0 0.25 degrees and where you see the measured temperature curve in this uh, temperature range as well. Uh, let's look at some of the features and mode of the sensors. Here you see the block diagram. So basically when you power up the temperature sensor, it is always in the power down mode. In the power down mode, it is con it consumes the least amount of power. And in certain applications, the sensor remains most of the time in the power down mode. The first is the single conversion mode where a user gives an input that he needs to read one temperature reading via microcontroller. So one temperature measurement is uh, measured from the sensing element and converted digit and digitalized and stored in the I2C, uh, stored in the internal registers and user can read this data through microcontroller. After this conversion, the sensor again moves back to the power down mode. On the other hand, there is also continuous mode where you can select your data rates from 25 Hertz to 200 Hertz, that means from 25 Hertz, you get as many as 25 samples in a second to 200 Hertz, it's 200 samples per second. And in continuous mode, the sensor continuously uh, measures a new temperature data as per the defined uh, data rate. For sure, this con uh, consumes more power than the single conversion mode. Also, there is user-defined temperature thresholds that you can set from the user side that generates an interrupt. For example, when you set the temperature limit high and low, if the temperature goes above it, uh, the interrupt goes um, low, so it's an active low interrupt, and the microcontroller side, it is it is notif not notified that the temperature is high or low. Some steps should be taken or microcontroller or the host controller has to notify the sensor that uh, uh, acknowledge the alert, and then the alert goes again to active high. It waits then again for another event for the temperature high or low, and then again, the interrupt is enabled. Let's move forward to some of the applications in uh, industry where the temperature sensors can be used. Um, the very first is the cool junction compensation in the thermocouple. So as mentioned previously that uh, the thermocouple uses two different metals connected together and the cold junction is the reference uh, temperature which with respect to the uh, target temperature is measured. Usually the thermocouples have then some filters, some amplifier and the, the digital uh, dig digital circuit that stores the uh, temperature in a microcontroller. In order to know the cold junction of the sensor, most widely used sensors are the RTD, platinum-based RTD sensors, where you place the RTD as close as to the cold junction, then the RTD circuit also uses some amplifier, some uh, ADC converter, and then you have uh, some data logs that uh, compare the temperature from the thermocouple and the RTD, and then you have the temperature of the cold junction. So here, when you say that 
my sensor has accuracy of uh, X percentage, then you add also some peripheral devices, for example, filters, amplifiers, which also add some noise and also adds inaccuracy of your complete system. So at the end, sometimes you also have to again recalibrate your whole system. The RTDs also might have problem of self heating and they are also very design sensitive. So you have to take care of your design and invest a lot of time designing complex circuits. A solution that we propose would be that use a digital temperature sensor for the cold junction, comp cold junction compensation so that you have a directly digital output from the sensor that can be directly fed to the microcontroller and compare it with your uh, thermocouple circuits. This eliminates need of your all the peripheral components that you need and also makes your layout very simple. Here one point is also very important that you are comparing a system accuracy versus a device accuracy. So system accuracy means that you have RTD, you have your analog, uh, analog filters and then you have your ADC and this whole uh, accuracy is called the whole system accuracy. On the other hand, the whole sensor being one single IC comes fully calibrated and pre-calibrated. Same way you have to sometimes perform, as mentioned, the whole system's calibration. For that, the whole system needs to be kept at one single temperature. This could be tricky in some of, uh, some of the applications. Another application for the temperature monitoring and control is in the laptops that we have a automatic fan control. So we have a temperature sensor on chip on the PCB, which sends the data to microcontroller and based on the temperature alert system or interrupt, it sends this uh, data to, it drives the some actuator or fan to drive to run at certain speed or to shut down when the temperature is not so high. Also in some of the application, remote application, this data is sent to a wireless module and remote can also, a remote host can also control the fan speed based on the temperature. This kind of temperature monitoring is, is today in DRAMs in the power supplies or also you can see in the computer main board where the temperature of the PCB or the whole housing needs to be maintained at certain point. Another example is the temperature monitoring of the server room. This is a picture of a server room from our uh, Germany office where we put a temperature sensor in the server room because server room needs to be continuously monitored at certain temperature. The temperature should not be higher at some point and this is the uh, logging station or the display station at uh, our working desk that we can constantly monitor the temperature of the server room. Uh, wirelessly. Some of the other applications uh, include the temperature compensation for gas sensors for thermocouple as we already saw in the previous slides. Um, asset tracking on uh, not just the food tracking but also some of the other uh, uh, supply chain needs to uh, track the temperature as well. The servers and server rooms in the HVAC applications where the air the temperature needs to be monitored in the ducts, uh, in the house, the thermostat. We are having more and more uh, digital uh, devices to control the temperature of the house. And of course, the white goods, um, refrigerators, uh, microwaves needs uh, temperature sensors to uh, work at a certain temperature. And these all sensors nowadays come require a digital sensor that can be fed uh, that can be impl implemented very easily and very quickly. The last part of the today's webinar is the design recommendation for this sensor. As mentioned that the sensor has a bottom pad which is exposed. This bottom pad is a die attached pad where uh, the sensor die or the junk, uh, sensor die is placed. So the best thermal conduction path from the if, is realized from bottom to top and you can have a very uh, accurate junction temperature. And this is one of the benefit of the sensor. So in the first example, uh, if you want to measure the ambient temperature. So for the ambient temperature, um, the sensor placement is also key. 
for example you need to place your heat source ic as far as possible from the sensor also it can be realized from some perforation or an island cut out or some slits that it has more airflow so that air can flow easily to the sensor also the ground plane is most common uh, thermal conductive uh, element in the whole pcb so the sensor should be placed outside the whole ground plane and also the hashed ground plane also helps in uh, thermal conductivity on the other hand if you want to measure the component temperature here you need to place the temperature sensor as close as possible to the heat source ic also you can connect the ground plane of the heat source ic to the uh, central pad of the sensor so that a heat conduction path has been generated you can also keep the place the temperature sensor on the other side of the ic and then directly have the connection from the ground plane to the central pad this will have the shortest thermal conduction path uh, for the pcb as pcb are approximately 1.6 millimeters thick and this will have a very high temperature of your uh, temperature monitoring of your target device here we also did some similar kind of uh, exp experiment where we had a hole cut on the bottom side of the pcb so that the pad was exposed to the air and on the second uh, pcb we had the ground uh, the central pad attached to the ground plane and then we measured the temperature uh, rise and fall time so the red curve is the uh, uh, temperature measurement of the air with the pcb with the hole and the gray curve is the pcb with the uh, pad attached uh, temperature central pad attached to the ground as you can see that the sensor ambient sensor has a very uh, uh, slightly higher response time than the pcb pad so that this senses the ambient temperature faster and responds to the temperature change faster than the pcb the response time was almost approximately seven seconds faster so these kind of design consideration are very important where you where your application needs which kind of design whether you want to measure an ambient temperature sensor ambient temperature or whether you want to measure some pcb temperature or a target uh, device temperature or even in confined small confined area where you have to measure some temperature of a smaller area where you can also use the temperature sensor that brings us to the end of the temperature sensor uh, presentation in the last slide i would like to summarize what we have discussed so what do we offer is that improved efficiency because the sensor is fully calibrated you don't have to calibrate it as per your application the ease of integration you don't need any peripheral circuits or analog circuits you can directly place the sensor and design in the sensor in your pcb the sensor is robust in operation it is qualified with different accelerated tests and as mentioned it is industry 4.0 compatible it can be operated uh, for battery operated devices and also it has very low current consumption at the end what do we what do we offer as well is the long time availability of these sensors so if you design in uh, the sensor will be available for a longer time which is industry standard all the sensors are available at stock we also offer direct design in support and technical support uh, the user manuals and app, app notes are available as well the cad and eda libraries for the sensors are also available for the quick product prototyping you can also use the evaluation board for the evaluation board we also offer the software development kit where we have some example codes that you can directly uh, use this as a first communication of uh, first communication of the sensor with your microcontroller 
as with all of our podcasts, some images and videos will be unavailable based on the streaming service. You can access all videos and images by simply clicking on the link provided in the description or copy and paste it into a web browser or visit the Worth Electronic YouTube page. You can also find the entire lineup of wireless connectivity and sensors for your applications by visiting Worth Electronic online. These include temperature, humidity with integrated temperature, 6-axis IMU, 3-axis acceleration, absolute and differential pressure sensors, along with evaluation kits and related components to complete your design. You are listening to Worth Electronics' What's Up radio podcast, where each week we are seeing what's up in the world of electronics and PCB design. We'll be checking in with leading industry experts and Worth Electronic technical specialists. We're going to shine a light on interesting topics, such as energy harvesting, wireless power transfer, EMI issues, and so much more. Tune in to get technical design tips and applications during your commute, at your desk, or wherever you might be with Worth Electronics' What's Up podcast.